Hello there, podcast listener. You are listening to What Scares Us, a podcast from the Ann Arbor District Library in Michigan, where four friends share the movies that make us quicken our pace and make us look over our shoulder when we are walking down a dark alley. I'm Christopher, and I'm joined by three other staff members of the library today. My name is Matt. I'm Allison. And I'm Amanda. Today we are talking about the 1942 movie, Cat People. Just to put this into perspective, what was happening in 1942, Casablanca came out, Citizen Kane was one year old, and the war in the Pacific was raging. This movie was also remade in 1982, featuring John Larroquette, (laughs) Ray Wise, Theme song by David Bowie, Nastasia Kinski, and Malcolm McDowell, and oh. Ed Bagley Jr. What? Okay, <laughs> why did I not watch that one? Why, why, why do we do that? <laughs> I will say the 1982 version is fantastic as this is, but that's going to be a movie for another day, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, uh, beginning this, first of all, It's hard to imagine this movie is now 81 years old. And it's, I I would say it's almost shocking today. And it was certainly must have been shocking to audiences back in 1942. To give a brief synopsis, Irina from Serbia has shown up in New York City. And she is an artist and she meets a an eligible bachelor and the two strike up a friendship starring in the movie are simone simon a french actress who plays irina kent smith who plays oliver reed and jane randolph who plays alice and i would say those are really the three key people in the movie but if you're a fan of 60s television, you might spot Alfred from the Batman TV show. He's also in this movie. At the beginning of the movie, we see the title credits, and the backdrop is a wonderful Black Panther, which shows up later on in the movie. And we get a title card of, Even as fog continues to lie in the valleys, So does ancient sin cling to the low places, the depressions in the world consciousness. And that begins our movie. We see Irina, or Irena, her name is actually pronounced variously in the movie. I've noticed that. (laughs) (laughs) And she's, not only is she a litter bug, but um, she's also a very fast sketch artist. (laughs) Well, didn't she? She tried to make it in the basket, right? Yeah, but mm-hmm. but then at the end of that scene, she doesn't even bother to pick up her last sketch. Oh, right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I thought that the lost sketch was going to like blow into some direction and fall in the hands of somebody it wasn't supposed to, but no, it was just there. But we got to see what the picture was. If it was in the bin, we wouldn't have been able to see the picture. Right. And what she was drawing was important to some other things that came later in the movie. She strikes up a friendship with a man standing there who is Oliver Reed, Mr. Oliver Reed. And um, he asks her to go out to dinner or go out to tea sometime. And she says, no, why don't you come up to my apartment right now for tea? I imagine that must have been very forward for the time. You say moving fast for 42. Uh, Yeah. Even now, I would Uh, never just go up to somebody and be like, hey, want to go back to my place? Uh, Yes. Yeah. I've been drawn at the zoo zoo all day. (laughs) Well, he literally picked up a piece of trash (laughs) off the floor of hers, threw it away. I'm sure she's very attractive, and I'm sure they were both attracted to each other physically. But she, he literally picked up her trash and then just like walked her home. That's then love, she, baby. Well, then she says, too, you're my first real friend. So you get into, like, where that comes from and how lonely she is and why she keeps away from people. That all comes into play. But at first, when I was in, getting introduced to the movie, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe I need to take my sketchbook to the zoo more often. <laughs> uh, I think someone might be upset if you do that. 
<laughs> I really love Arena picks up all of her stuff off the ground and Oliver totally checks out her ass. He's just like, <laughs> oh, all right. I didn't catch that. It's, it like, yeah, I saw it. Every, I watched this movie twice and both times I was just like, damn, like, mm -hmm. keep it under wraps, dude. <laughs> I was really stuck on the fact that she, like, hugely missed the basket, but then he picks it up and he just nails it. <laughs> Classic men's rights shit. <laughs> and I swear he looks around like, look how awesome I, I am. That's exactly what it was, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how a man does it. <laughs> I also love um, the sign. It says, let no one say and say it to your shame that all was beauty here until you came. Is that just about littering? Like, it obviously relates to the movie, but why is that hanging up at the zoo? And right there. Yeah. I thought it was related to the littering. Yeah. It was That's, beautiful until you came and made it unpretty. In 1943, they came up with the idea of no littering instead of that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, this is like, too complicated. People aren't understanding this sign. <laughs> <laughs> this Should we the, try a limerick? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is the 42 version of click it or take it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Before must, they move to frown face for 2023. <laughs> it must be a poem or nothing else. <laughs> The other thing that cracked me up was that um, first quote that you read, Christopher. Um, I didn't super pay attention to it the first go around, but the second time I realized that's a quote from the psychologist in the movie. That is not like a real, no one actually said that. That's made up right. as said by that like crackpot psychologist <laughs> that we meet later. I didn't realize that. Yeah, but it says it's by Dr. Lewis Judd and that yeah. was him. So... Things progress seemingly back at the apartment after tea. Beautiful staircase up to that apartment, by the way. <laughs> it is. And it seems to be pretty late at night. But uh, the dinner bell rings and Oliver says, boys who come to tea can't be expected to stay for dinner. <laughs> Which I think is just a great line. Yeah. But Words we're to live by. <laughs> we're already starting to get a little bit of a creepy feeling mm -hmm. When Irena says, I like the dark, it's friendly. And then there's that really odd line about the panther screaming like a woman. <laughs> I was hoping they were going to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It makes sense, though, because even like, um, obviously we don't have panthers, but coyotes, like there's a ton of coyote in my parents' backyard, and it they sound like they're screaming, too. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. not a howl. I think right from the beginning of this movie, we see it is beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. The yep. black and white is just fantastic. I, you Their know, use of the use of shadows mm -hmm. yeah. in it the entire time, but you notice it right away. Also, the way the camera moves, even when they're at the zoo. Every time I would get complacent about the way that a scene looked, I remember that it was 1942. It's very early in major motion pictures, and like, so a lot of the stuff was probably pretty revolutionary at the time. I love the way that the movie looked. And shot on a budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although yeah. they did go a little bit over budget. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that they point out in the commentary is um, the scene where Oliver and Arena are in front of the front doors to her apartment. There is a shadow um, across the doors that is like a cage. It looks like a cage. It's like a cage-like shadow over the front doors to her apartment. Ooh. Huh. Which oh. I didn't catch at all. I did yeah, not catch that's that. That's beautiful. No, neither did I. After Oliver leaves and they make plans to have dinner the next night, we're back at Oliver's workplace and we meet Alice. More yeah. awesome shadows in there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and plus just this whole environment this mm -hmm. whole workplace of the ship engineering is, is fantastic mm -hmm. i loved it mm -hmm. so we meet alice who as i said was played by jane randolph and she is a uh, kind of a great comrade of oliver's they get along really well they have a great time things are quite warm between them and at some point oliver brings a cat to work, a, a little kitten. In a shoebox. Way shoe too box. small of a box. No yeah. holes. No <laughs> holes, yep. No wonder that cat's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but Alice doesn't seem to have any trouble uh, befriending the, the kitten. But um, 
when Oliver takes the cat, the kitten home or back to give to Irena, Irena says, cats just don't like me. <laughs> and the kitten does not like Irena, for sure. Again, why are you giving someone a creature, a gift of a cat on your second date? Slow down, <laughs> Oliver. Yep. Yeah, the timeline just... is very rushed with all. And what comes after this, too, it's all. I wasn't sure how much time had passed between like them meeting. Yep. The tea, the cat, like, and what comes next. And I just, for me, when I have a movie, like, from the 40s with animals in it, I'm a little fretful for what was going on with those animals. And so I tried not to think too much about that. But regardless of that, like, nobody needs a, a living creature as a gift on, like, the first week you meet them. Yep. Unless you specifically, like, made a plan to do this, you know? <laughs> it also know. cracked me up because during their first meeting, she's like... Oh, um, you know, the people in my village were cursed. We become cats. He's like, oh, shit, I know the I perfect gift. I got the perfect gift, gift for you. I just <laughs> want to get you. Here you so go. Maybe, maybe that was sort of his way. He thought it was maybe a way in with her was like to bring her this cute little kitten. <laughs> Listen to it scream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I didn't pay attention to anything you said. Here's a cat. Yeah. Well, that's kind of his MO yeah. the entire time. True. But also, it was like a good way for us to be introduced to like the cat and Al liking her. And then they go back to the pet store next and you get how much you start. OK, maybe she is really a cat person. When she tells him that whole story about the Marmalukes and um, King John of Serbia, there's a big picture behind her and there's two cats like right over her shoulder. So I feel like that paired with all the panther stuff like it's not that much of a stretch to think that mm -hmm. she might like cats but again just like get some coffee with her or something just, <laughs> it's fine you don't need to get her any gift yet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um the other thing that was super funny to me is when she's telling that whole story about um like the history or backstory of her people both times i thought she was saying the marmadukes so i was imagining like the An army of dog. Great Danes, yeah. I <laughs> like a cat versus thought dog. thought I heard that, too. That's good. <laughs> it wasn't until I looked up the Wikipedia page um, just to kind of read through it that I realized it was Mamelukes. Mm. Like, there's not an R. I don't know what I was thinking. But, yeah, I thought it was the Marmadukes the whole time. So after the Marmadukes invade, then come the Garfields. Oh, no. Oh, right. <laughs> and I've then the Beetle really Bailies. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great short. <laughs> <laughs> we we should talk about that story that Irena introduces. She says that she is from Serbia, and that uh, there were uh, that the villages were all Christian, and then the Mamluks came and enslaved everyone, and they stayed Christian for a while, but then started to stray into satanic cults and satanic beliefs. So right right away, forty two, we're talking about. Satanic beliefs and witches and witches, which is amazing. Yep, right. And Great Danes. <laughs> <laughs> and Irena has this amazing statue on her coffee table, which is King John of Serbia holding up a sword with cats impaled on it. Yeah, and that may come into play later on in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> and it's already come up once before because that's what she was drawing at that's the That's what zoo. she was drawing. Right. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, I thought this backstory was really interesting, uh -huh. and I tried to look into it more um, because I guess King John of Serbia in the movie is based on someone in real life, like some historical figure, but it's not like a one-to-one. -one, like, this isn't necessarily the, like, exact historical figure thing that happened obviously hmm. but um yeah there is some sort of um historical element to the backstory well things are progressing between oliver and irena or are they <laughs> at one point they declare their love for each other oliver says i've never kissed you so there is no kissing or anything else, and there is a wedding in the next scene yeah. at the Belgrade <laughs> restaurant in New York City, which I, I often wonder if that's a real restaurant or not. That woman who makes a comment, she's there's other people there that are that are from Serbia, so it makes sense that it's a Serbian restaurant. 
Um, so when when he says, I've never kissed you, Irena says, I've lived in dread of this moment. I never wanted to love you. I've stayed away from people. I fled from the past. Some things you could never know or understand. Evil things. She's right. This man is not going to understand the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can, you can see, like, her yearning, though, that she wants to, like, quote unquote, like be more normal or just like have feelings for people and be physically attracted and act upon those things and kiss a person that you're about to marry. But you can still tell there's some darkness of there's a reason why she's not doing any of those things. But he loves her anyway. Does he? No. <laughs> he says he does. That was kind of my question the whole movie. Did they get the bird? They got the bird before all this, right? Yeah. The whole pet store scene. The pet store. Where all of the pets... Yeah. Let er, let you know, hey, this lady's no good. <laughs> also, a, trading a cat for a bird is not a fair trade. No. I don't think. <laughs> I don't even think from a dollars and cents standpoint that makes sense. So the the idea of whether Oliver loves Irena or not, I think is interesting because later on in the movie, he does say, I don't even know if I love her, but I'm drawn to her and I mm -hmm. have to watch her when she's in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is some kind of primal or animal thing mm -hmm. going on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it reminded me of um, like magnets. It's like a magnetic yeah. pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like the idea of like, I only want what I haven't <clears throat> got. She's sort of like not a conquest. Not that he was being, you know, stalkery, but just this, there was an allure because she was attracted to him too, but she knew. <laughs> he also tells Alice at one point that he doesn't know what love is. And it's like... It, that's obvious yeah. to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, the movie is only 72 minutes long, which is a great Love length it. for a movie. It's but like the, so there's a lot of things to kind of fit into it, like the the history, the lore, um, their meeting, falling in love, getting married, and then what happens, you know, coming up, leading towards the end. There's not a lot of story, but there's it's pretty quiet. It's, it's a pretty quiet movie. It's very efficient. Mm -hmm. It gets all of those points across in pretty like pretty quick fashion yeah. there's not a lot of downtime in it because there isn't enough time for there to be downtime <laughs> i did like um like this little love story at the beginning because um i think it kind of follows the trajectory of a lot of movie romances where it's like oh yeah the meet cute then they go on two dates and now they're getting married and they live happily ever after but it was interesting because midway through this movie it's like oh wait a second here's like the real life reality of a mm -hmm. relationship and this is like not quite right here mm -hmm. this is not going to be long lasting in any sense of the word mm -hmm. yeah and yeah so the the restaurant scene was interesting did you have more to tell us about the restaurant scene <laughs> I just wanted to say this is one place where I think the original does a much better job than the remake because oh. there's something similar that happens in the remake in 82. Huh. So do you remember in the restaurant scene, the, the woman who is so oh, yeah. striking, the, the first glance I got of her, it looked like she had horns on her head. <laughs> well, they even say, she looks like a cat. Right. <laughs> she mm -hmm. got those panther ears. Yeah, so she <laughs> comes over and she says, my sister, mm -hmm. and saying it's, you know, you're my sister, yeah. so she knows what's going on. And even if Irena won't admit that she's a cat person, this other person can mm -hmm. sense it. Yeah. And then there's one of the guys at the table says, she looks like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was half expecting her to meow at her. Which yeah. Hiss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it, rem it reminded me of... A little scene at the beginning of Monster Squad when Sean and Patrick are at the school and they got busted by their principal and Patrick's trying to like explain, you know, what was going on and what there was a drawing of a woman who of their teacher and she was really boring and they call her Meow Mix because she has a, a head shaped like a cat. So when I was watching this, I was just hearing Patrick he's being like Meow Mix. She's got a head shaped like a cat. <laughs> Aww. I really liked the restaurant scene um, on my second watch. Because the first time around, I was just trying to figure out what's what. I already knew the plot because I read Kiss of the Spider Woman like 10 years ago. And they tell you the whole plot in that, although they don't mention it by name. But mm. the second time around, I was so much, I, I was struck by how lonely Arena is the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like she says that, um, you know, she hasn't met a friend here in America. But at the restaurant, she's surrounded by other Serbian people and this woman comes up to her and mm -hmm. talks to her. 
but there's like no understanding between the two of them like she doesn't try to make friends with this woman like she's mm-hmm. isolated from the serbian community in are they in new york mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so even you know someone who she who she could make friends with she's like not interested in or doesn't pursue that in any way and it just kind of adds to the sense of isolation yeah mm-hmm. i do there is that the sense of quietness and isolation throughout the film, especially with Arena. But at the restaurant, when the woman that looks similar to a cat, when she says Moya Sestra to her, Arena is panicking and she looks to whoever's next to her and she says, you saw what she looks like. So she, I think Arena is just, she's paranoid and she's so afraid. She's so afraid. The movie is like about loneliness and fear to me. Mm-hmm. She's so lonely and she's so afraid because she wants these things that she can't do. And But also she's afraid that if she does them, of what's going to happen. Like, is she going to turn into a cat? which is terrifying to her. So for her to have this woman who maybe potentially does want to be her friend, but she, that woman looks like a cat. She's, and Irena doesn't want to fall down. And she doesn't want to she wants become that. To do with it. Yeah. yeah. So that just adds to the, the loneliness. Right. I do love how Oliver's like, eh, don't worry, honey. None of this shit's real. <laughs> you're fine. Doesn't he say <laughs> something like, oh, you're cute, kid. Yeah. yeah. And he like knocks her under the chin with his fist. Yep. This uh, is a nice wedding. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> there, there, slugger. <laughs> Jeepers, you're a babe. <laughs> <laughs> so after this wedding celebratory feast at the restaurant, they go home, and the next thing we see, they're at home, and they're speaking to each other through a closed door. So this is not boding well for their future future relationship this isn't the typical wedding night (laughs) (laughs) slinking down a door and lying on the ground by yourself right and i did like that too you see that closed door and you could see him preparing a separate bed in a separate bedroom have we explicitly said why they are not consummating their marriage we probably haven't (laughs) it's only the main point of the movie that's right (laughs) because if she does that with a, a person she will turn into a panther that's right and likely yeah. kill them even just like kissing like any if anything she, yeah any arousal i think if passion. she if she is like passionately aroused she will turn into a panther <laughs> <laughs> i think this is interesting because this was also a big theme of buffy this kind of fear of sex because if you remember back um angel could not have sex with anyone or else he would turn into a vampire. What? I didn't I've never see seen any this. of that. Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen it. You, <clears> you haven't, haven't watched either. Buffy? No. Nope. None of us three have seen Buffy. Oh nope. Wow, usually people are yelling at me, you haven't watched Buffy? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, New podcast idea. <laughs> that was the, one of the central themes of Buffy. Huh. And so this is played out earlier in cat people oh neat this kind of fear of sex and fear of any kind of passions Mm -hmm. at all or jealousy or anything like that Mm. may unleash this other kind of force would you say buffy's any good (gasps) i loved it okay it's what got me through grad school binge watching it okay you know it's gonna be dated today i'm sure but yeah, I loved it. And I also didn't watch it when it was on originally. Right. Oh. It's one of those things that I have a blind spot for. And it and I wonder if it's in the same category as something like Friday Night Lights, where when that was on, I was like, that has to be bad. And then too many people told me it was great, and I watched it, and it was. <laughs> mm. But it's hard for me to believe that about Buffy because <laughs> of the way the effects look. <laughs> oh, yeah. With, because I watched things like an idiot. Yeah, the school of Matt. Yes. <laughs> like you know, an idiot. <laughs> I mean, there are there are some clunky plot lines. There's a cold It's clunky, Joss Whedon, isn't it? It yeah. is. There's a whole clunky season, mm-hmm. which is hard to get through. You watch it, and Angel's also different, a spinoff. So, huh. yeah. yeah. What well, is interesting what you're saying about there's still this transforming into another being for X, Y, and Z reasons. For this one, it's tied to their history. Like she comes from supposedly this tribe of, you know, ancient, an ancient tribe of cat people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like hereditary. Yeah. So, and she doesn't know it about herself because she hasn't done it yet. She hasn't been so aroused. She's letting herself not be aroused because she's afraid of what will happen or she is not confirmed. 
And everyone keeps saying, oh, it's you're not from cat people. You're fine. You're fine. That has to be almost impossible. I realize there was probably less titillating stuff happening in 1942. I mean, case in, actually, there was a moment in the movie that I that I really that kind of stuck with me in the apartment where he was just sitting there smoking. And it occurred to me that that doesn't really happen now because we would be looking at a device or we would be reading something or something would be on in the background. So I guess there was less titillating stuff. I just don't understand how she didn't accidentally get horny and turn into a <laughs> panther at some point. <laughs> Realistically speaking, especially because she's at the zoo. Well, this is why she's... But she avoids people. She spends right. a lot of time alone. She doesn't have any friends. She only knows Oliver. That's she's, not a good start. It's fear and loneliness. <laughs> right. Fear and loneliness are like the... But as as viewers were like, come on, just get it on. Come on, you're you're you, you got it. You're not a cat, or maybe you are, but it's okay. Right. <laughs> um, I also love how Oliver says he'll give her all the time in the world yes. and all the patience in him, which I guess is about one year. Yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> Is it really uh, a year? I felt like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. No sense of the passage of time. But but immediately yeah. when we meet Alice early on, I'm like, okay, he is working with this very closely with this attractive woman. Can I go back for a second? There were two sick burns at the wedding. Ooh, yes. <laughs> at the restaurant? Yeah. First of all, uh, my notes say, wow, these wedding guests have doubts about the marriage from the get-go. <laughs> Immediately. They're talking about it at the reception. <laughs> yes. There's only like 20 people there. Yep. Next to her. Right yeah. next to her. Yeah. And not and in like 40s voices, they're like, say. They're saying it very loudly. <laughs> There's no way that they're not hearing it. <laughs> And the other thing that stuck out to me is um, Irena is wowed that there's like a Serbian restaurant in town. And Alice tells her to ask Alice because she knows all the unimportant details. I missed that. <laughs> I didn't even pick up on that. I got the line. But that's great. <laughs> right. Irena is back at her apartment and she gets a sudden yen to stick her hand inside the birdcage. And she becomes very cat-like playing with this bird. And the next thing we see is the bird is lying dead on the bottom of the bird cage. She feels bad, but after that, she is quite compelled to go back to the zoo and throw that little bird into the panther cage. So wild that she makes that underhand throw into the cage, but she can't <laughs> Perfect. put paper can't... in a <laughs> yep. trash. Yep. What is this? Yep. Is there no security at this fucking zoo either? <laughs> it's supposed to be like the Central Park Zoo. Oh, is that is it open all the time? Is that just open? You can go at I, any I'm hour. I'm just picturing and... you can just stroll through it, and just these things are there. I never mm. look into it, but that was what I was imagining. Somebody her... put that chain up at night, yeah. though, that you could just well, she's step like, right over. Well, she's like buddies with the zookeeper. She's like, oh yeah, here's your key. Are you talking <laughs> about that guy that was with nothing else to do? <laughs> 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 Which I would listen to that song on repeat if I could find it. <laughs> so here's the funny thing about, I, I think it's both that song and the kind of recurring musical motif that comes back over and over again in this movie. I think it's the same notes from this this Miles Davis ditty that my brother used to hum to me. Oh, really? but the beginning and then right after she kills the bird you hear na, 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 na. <laughs> like the sad version of yeah. that and I can't tell if that's the same nothing else to do song that the zookeeper is humming Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> that melody is based on some little French lullaby or something oh. um, they mentioned in the commentary. But I was cracking up because it reminded me of Rain Rain Go Away. So, like, especially when it was like the sad version, I was just laughing so much. Well, when right. Christopher saw me, it, it sounds like uh, Freddy Krueger. Ooh. Right, right, right. Oh but if it's God. a night coming for If it's a lullaby... You. Wow, if we ever make a horror movie, we'll have to include that little ditty. But also none of this. And I I, I will randomly sing that lo, the, that little ditty from A Nightmare on Elm Street just randomly because I enjoy it. Yeah. It did not pop in my head at all when I, I don't even remember any Same. of the music. I only really? watched Cat People one time like two days ago. I don't remember any of the music. I think I was just trying to rush through this movie because I didn't really want to watch it. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I, but normally I pay attention. I did notice the beautiful cinematography and like the shadows were important. But with music, I literally don't recall any little bits. I, we had similar experiences with this movie. And I think, but I do remember that some of the orchestral swells were really nice. Um, but mostly that, that guy singing that song just made me laugh. That's cute. <laughs> Let's make a sweet mashup of all of these songs we just mentioned. We can find it. We can find a way to make that work. I also love that um, the the zookeeper or whoever that man is. He says that no one sees, no one comes to see the panther when they're happy, because it's evil. Why does he think that this, like, are are all the animals in the zoo evil? Is it just the panther? What what are the zoo rules? I need to know. Right. Just the book of Revelation says. <laughs> <laughs> is it really in there? Well, according to the zookeeper, he says that. Um, oh yeah, he does talk. He does do that at one point, right? He says, "Like unto a leopard," which is he says, "Not a leopard," oh. but is just like the black panther, is in the Book of Revelations as an evil animal. Hmm. Huh? He's an evil critter, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wanted Leroy from the <laughs> back. Oh my God. Very, in yes, this movie. very you know much so like Leroy. Right? <laughs> Oh, wow. I, I miss that movie. I was thinking about it this morning, honestly, thinking about the le- the last time we did like a a movie that was older. And I, I oh my gosh. That movie popped The Bad my Sea. Head. We're talking about The Bad Sea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please Go back watch. and listen to all of our episodes. Just, or just, yeah. if you don't, just watch The Bad Seed. Um, that movie popped into my head in this scene because uh, Christopher must have a vendetta against birds. First, sweet sea. <laughs> right, right. Now this bird. I was <laughs> sweet sea. About that. I thought Irena does this beautiful and haunting, great job of describing mental illness here. Uh, she just says she walks down the street and everyone else is happy, and she just wishes she could have a normal, happy life like everyone else in the world. And that just sounded uh, so true. If you have any kind of mental thing going on where you just want to get rid of it and be happy or just content like mm-hmm. everyone else that you happen to see. So I thought that was a really cool piece. That is cool because I know now there's more vocal like communication about like invisible disabilities. But to have somebody talk about in 1942, that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Although I did not like the psychiatrist, whatever his name was. You didn't? Judd. <laughs> Mr. You Mustache. You don't think shining a bright light in somebody's face is a good idea? <laughs> I just thought they were all teaming up against her. Well, it yeah. feel that way. I, at first I was kind of impressed because Oliver says that the problem isn't that she's cursed, but that she believes that she's cursed. And he like suggests that she needs help and he arranges for a psychiatrist i was like yes 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 all of this makes sense very supportive good yeah and then from the moment she meets him it's all downhill (laughs) nothing none of this is right he does have such a great speaking voice though doesn't he (laughs) he does and a great suit yes (laughs) he looks like he's gonna sell her cigarettes (laughs) fancy ones It's so funny that hypnosis is in the first scene and the movie then starts to feel very Hitchcockian Mm -hmm, to me. mm -hmm. And you get that illuminated face with this this whole halo of blackness around her face as she's speaking. Yeah. 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 And I do think that the movie sort of falls into darkness. Like you get things rapidly start happening that are just like yeah, really fun to watch unravel. At this point, I noted that her accent flies in and out of existence like Alec Baldwin's wife. Yeah. <laughs> I did read her something French about. <laughs> I did read something about how her accent changed during the movie multiple times. There's mm-hmm. also a lot of there's some criticism about her as an actress being in this one. I liked her. I did too. I, I actually kind of liked everybody in this. Um, they all played their their respective parts really well, even if the dude was pretty reprehensible and not a good. Not a good guy. Yeah. Probably a good guy in 42 standards, but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wanted more of like an irreverent, funny character, like a side part somewhere. Give me that Leroy. Yeah. We need, I just, I want, because sometimes movies from the 40s will have that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like even like if you look at like old Fred Astaire movies and stuff, you just have that, you know, 
And I always liked those characters. So I wanted one. I don't know where you would fit it. This movie is pretty dark and shadowy. And there's 72 minutes is pretty slim to tell this story, let alone have like a really great character in the background. I'm telling yeah. you, closest we got yeah. was that zookeeper singing his little song. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I, that's that what was it. worked for me. Yeah. I also love the hurdy gurdy player who just kind of floats into frame yep. at the beginning and leaves. So you never see him again. <laughs> It's funny that you say Fred Astaire because a lot of the sets were reused from Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers uh, really? movies. Yeah. I did really? read that the sets were reused. Yeah, that's how they kept the budget yeah. lower. Well, back at the ship engineering company, Alice admits her love for Oliver. And at first she almost says it jokingly, like, you know how much I love you. Oh, God. And then she says, no, no, I really do love you. And um, now the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> I actually didn't mean that. <laughs> but the other interesting thing about this set in 42 is a little later on in the movie, he describes maybe getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. And it seems so easy. He says, I'll just grant her a divorce or we can have it annulled. You know, like it's just a given thing. Yeah. Which I don't think was a common thing at all back then and probably super frowned upon. Right. And it's, you know, it's just going to happen uh, in this movie. Man, here's the thing. Alice, honey, if you're going to tell him, tell him before the wedding. What is this? What are we doing here? Like, he's been married for two months. You missed your chance. Sorry. Time to move on. Right. <laughs> yeah. He wants out of his marriage, though. <laughs> well, he wants to bone Alice. Yeah. <laughs> he gave all his patience all one month. Right. <laughs> That's all he had in the whole world. <laughs> his I, world was 30 days long. I also love how he's like, my life has been great. I've never experienced any hardship whatsoever. Right. <laughs> Good for you. God. <laughs> It was in this that she said something about makes me want to spit cotton, right? Yeah. That was a that was a fun little line that, that I marked down. That is a great line. <laughs> yeah. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It's like a hairball. It's like caught in your throat, right? Irena's back at the zoo, and this time the doctor sees her resisting the key. And this comes back later on in the movie. So the key to the panther's cage is right there, and Irena resists it. Um, and, she, and the doctor says, you fear the panther, but are drawn to him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people want to loose evil upon the world. So in this case, she has resisted her urge to uh, uh, loose something bestial upon the world yeah. or in herself. Dude, this is driving me insane. This zoo is like 10 seconds away from a major incident. <laughs> like people can come and go it's as they want during the night. This lady's finding the key to the fucking panther cage. <laughs> what? Yep. Nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> is that the, and he's the only worker there that I've seen too. Yes. That's the only part of the zoo we see. There's yeah. no walking up and down the rows. It does talk about the aviary and where the monkeys are because he says that's where people go when they're happy. Uh, yes, he does. We don't get to see that. I don't know if this was earlier or not, but at some point, um, Irena talks about how her dad died in a weird accident in the woods. Which ties back to the story from the beginning. Like, didn't they say that they chased him out into the woods and then some people came back? Well, also that her mother was then called Catwoman or something like that. So her mother was teased. She killed him in the woods? Yeah, it's not really clear. And I would say this is another place or this is a place where the 1982 version is actually a little bit more coherent. Oh. In this version, cats are afraid of Irena, but yet she is a cat person. How does that work? Right, so there's, I, it, it just seems to be for general effect or something, in my view, it's not totally cohesive gotcha. or coherent, right? It's like she's a cat, but cats are afraid of her, 
And cats also know who's right or who's not right, according to the lady who owns the pet store. <laughs> right. Right. But in the 1982 version, the backstory is, is more filled in. And I would say the effects of being a cat person are clearer. Man, I'm gonna yeah. go home and watch. Is it that set movie in the '80s? Tonight. I put it on hold. Is it set in the '80s? Oh yeah, huh. that's and so interesting. You'll, you'll <laughs> it's definitely set in the '80s. I mean, it's it's also just fascinating to see how men just kind of grab women and you know want an answer out of them or something like that. You know that I'd say the sexism is pretty pervasive in the '82 mm-hmm. version, and it's interesting to look at the 1942 version because. Irena really is kind of shuffled around from person to person and doesn't have a lot of volition, mm-hmm. I think, in this 1942 version. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Know. It's interesting, too, that it's like 40 years apart and you still want to talk all this like sexism. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, it's almost like nothing remake. changed. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. And here we are. Dudes um, rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I mean, if they want to remake it right now, that's like 40 well, it's, Yeah, we're ready for a <laughs> yeah. new updated 40 years, version. 40th of this, anniversary. Of this movie. And here we are in 2023. Um, but no, I didn't pick up on the fact with the history of her dad dying mysteriously in the woods. And perhaps that was what I infer may have been the mother. But if it makes me wonder, though, if you go back to like the history of the cat people, if this is descending from like an ancient tribe, their bloodline still went on. Even if you were theoretically um, like copulating and becoming panthers and killing, like there were still babies being born in order for this to be like a full line or to go down from through history, right? Kittens. Kittens? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm literally, I'm just, I just didn't really think about it. But I'm just curious, like if she is descent from her people in history, like the ancient, you know, it's just right. interesting. Yeah. Well, okay. Now that Maybe. you said that, there's no way that her dad was like part of the Marmaluke thing. So it, the, they have to be separate incidences. I thought maybe they were connected. But if her mother was a cat person, how long do cats live? I don't know the history or the scientificness of this, <laughs> this right. cat situation. What's I'm just I don't know anything about cats. Yeah. It's, some of this I was like, oh, I guess cats like don't get along. You can't have more than one cat at a time. I'm a dog person. I truly don't know. I'm with you. <laughs> but there's a hoarder house near me that tells me that you can have more than one cat. You can have as many as you want. You can have want. 20 fucking cats. <laughs> you can have more than one. I yeah. know people who successfully have like two to four cats. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how many cats you have, none of them will have sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I just give dogs, everybody. That's just give right. some dogs. You can. I don't. I don't like what either of those statements imply. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Marmaduke. Oh no. <laughs> well, we come to one of our first key scary moments in the movie. Ooh, yeah. Which I think is so well filmed. So in this scene. Alice is walking home and she starts to get scared that someone may be following her. And we see Irena following her and we see clips of their uh, legs moving back and forth. And we hear the clip clopping on the sidewalk and the two sounds are distinctive from one woman to the next. And suddenly one of the sounds stops. That's when I got freaked out. (coughs) Very cool scene. It really is. It's so beautifully shot with the the black and white, and then that when that sound stops, that's that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew about this scene because um, I knew about the Luton bus, which is when the bus pulls up right at the end, which is like widely considered to be one of the first jump scares I, in horror movies. That. Thank you for confirming that. I yeah. wrote that. I was like, would this be the first jump scare ever? Because yeah. that, it made me laugh. But I bet at the time it was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, that's called the Luton bus? Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, the uh, director or producer? The producer. Yeah. He does it again in a couple of his later movies. Um, I think he makes something called the Leopard Man. I might be wrong, but yeah. he does it in a couple others. But um, yeah, that's like widely considered to be the very first jump scare in horror movies. Oh, cool. That's great. It is called the Leopard Man. 
<laughs> very creative. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I love that scene. Um, although part of me the whole time was like, yes, get her. Kill her. <laughs> yeah. I am not an Alice. It's going to be a cat. I wanted it to be a big old cat fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So also later on, we see that some sheep have been killed at the zoo. <laughs> And then we see the bloody footprints on the sidewalk that change from giant cat prints into regular footprints from a shoe. That was really cool. I really yeah. loved that shot. Very cool. Um, I, I think it's in the same scene, but Alice has that kitten now, which side eye to that. But she named it John Paul Jones, so it's another Jonesy the cat. <laughs> oh wow! Hey. Why do we watch I miss that. cats in them? <laughs> cats and birds. Yeah, <laughs> that's cute. I also this has nothing to do with anything, but there's like a lady who's cleaning the office, and in two different scenes, she's like smoking, smoking and mopping. Ashes yeah. all over her boobs and like wipes it off. She's and she's walking around just like with it hanging out of her lip, <laughs> cool style. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so much, so much smoking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so many cigarettes and cocktails. <laughs> I just wrote, Alice is going to get it. <laughs> so we've got a, a real Hitchcockian dream sequence here, Ooh, in my yeah. opinion. Although mm -hmm. we could bring in our special guest, Al, who could confirm Ooh. that it was right. really a I would love to have him on Hitchcockian. So in this sequence... King John is holding up his sword, and that really becomes a symbol for the key. And Alice, excuse me, Irena, really wants to go get that key now from the zoo. Mm -hmm. And she really wants to loose that evil upon the world. So she goes back to the zoo and takes that key. This whole scene was so sad when she's, like, crying in the tub because now she has confirmation that she's been right the whole time i also imagine it's not very comfortable to turn into a giant cat and back plus she killed a bunch of sheep which is <laughs> never good it's not great yeah <laughs> yeah i also it made me wonder like what the what what you going off what you just said alice and when i was watching it, it made me think about other uh, movies with transformations like if you think about like a werewolf like mm -hmm. you have like a, a man going to a werewolf and i just wonder what it was like for this Young woman turning into a panther. Have you seen American Werewolf in London? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm imagining. It's like stretching. But yeah. it seems like she would have gotten smaller. The though. panther at the end is like basically a house cat. It is so teeny tiny. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't really see it. So the whole time I thought yeah. maybe it was just. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, even the panther that we see at the zoo is like on the small side. Because I thought about the, what the transformation would be like. Like you said, like American World of London. But mm -hmm. yeah, she would just get smaller. <laughs> she like shrinks down. So like tra <laughs> changing back would probably be pain. Well, both would be painful, but back would be way more painful probably. Yeah. Well, if you think of like a panther like standing on its hind legs. And yeah. If she was a smaller, if she was more petite, you know. Googling panther standing on. <laughs> like if they're if they're like five two and she's like five two, you know five five in heels. This idea freaked me out because it reminded me of being in elementary school and reading those animorphs books mm -hmm. and all the covers. They are like not oh yeah holographic, but yeah. like if you move them, they like uh, transform back and forth. Freaky. While Matt is Googling panther standing on hind legs, I'm going to Google what's more painful, turning into a panther or back into a human? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get on that next. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess cats are awfully stretchy. When you pick one up, they just kind of go like an accordion. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, it's, this but was a good tangent. Those are go some down. good Those are some good scenes, though, with her. Because things are falling more into place and, you know, something is coming. Mm -hmm. Everything's when falling she, apart. When she's Jesus. realizing what's true and she is sad and depressed and does not want to be a panther. And then in the scene after this, the three characters are visiting the museum. Oh, that was totally. I'm like, why are they all hanging out now? Oliver's yeah. such a dick. Yep. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to hang out with this lady who professed yep. her love for me. Why don't you go wait in the lobby while I hang out with her for an hour? Yeah. yeah. Why were they <laughs> hanging out? And Oliver says, we'll catch up to you later. So yeah. the we right. now is he and 
uh, what's her name again? Alice. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Even well, after yeah. Arena said she liked the little boats. Come yes, on. I know. <laughs> She's trying. <laughs> she <laughs> is, yeah. <laughs> there should have been some paintings with like cats or something, right? Well, there was the giant Egyptian statue. Oh, there was. Okay, yeah. Right. No, I thought about that. Right. Yeah. Like, those are kinda, cat people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she kind of looked at it no, on I her way that out. Now. Right. Yeah, I still was ticked off with this whole thing of those two in the museum just ganging up on her. Oh, you you go downstairs while we're going to hang out and hold yep. hands upstairs and look at this cat image of the boat. It's rough. <laughs> it would have been so sweet if she transformed right then and there. She should have and just bit <laughs> off both her heads and then. Or something s- else. <laughs> You're talking about his dick? Yeah, like a little John Bobbitt action. Uh, we. <laughs> All right, All right, settle down. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my principal voice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. We come to our second scary scene in the movie, which I think is so beautiful and so effective, and it's also recreated in the 1982 version oh, as is well. It? Yeah, it's mm. and I thought it was it was great to see them paying tribute to this this first version. So Alice is taking a swim in the pool, and I assume it's where she lives. It's like the basement. Yeah, it's like at her apartment. Right. Mm. So she goes down for a quick swim. Irena has followed her home and also wants to go into the pool area. But while Alice is in there, she gets scared. She sees a figure coming down the stairs, and she wonders what's going on, jumps into the pool, and starts looking around as she hears growling. Mm -hmm. Would you really be safer in the pool at that point? I had the same thought. (laughs) Like, panthers can swim, bitch. Get out. Time to run. (laughs) Probably stronger than you can. (laughs) Yeah. Also, don't try climbing a tree, because that is not going to work either. Mm -mm. Also, why did that lady let her go down into the pool? She doesn't live there. (laughs) I think, yeah, all all the water reflections, I think just play into your imagination the you scenes, don't know what you're seeing that scene looks great yeah yeah and i like the emotion behind it too when she starts screaming mm-hmm. yeah and then arena's just there <laughs> <laughs> yep it reminds- and up in the lobby they're just like oh she's screaming yeah <laughs> let's not be in a hurry to go see why right. <laughs> it reminded me of the end of it follows a little bit because that ends in the pool or oh, right, of course. End? That's right. <laughs> I don't remember wow, that. Ah, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's such a great scene. <laughs> I also love how that lady's like, oh, my God, your robe is all torn to shreds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you think that happened? What did you do to this thing? <laughs> roll. <laughs> oh, the Marmadukes. <laughs> well, Irena's total deadpan conversation here is great. It's just like ice and chills. Mm-hmm. And she just says something like, see you later, or, or something like that yeah. you know, at the very end and just walks out. It's yeah. so icy. It's yeah. also a huge realization for Arena in that moment of the reality of what things are and what's going to happen next. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a big, with the bathtub scene of being so sad and low, with, with this is like, you got to see her fully. Well, not You didn't really see her transform to the panther, but you know that she became the panther, did this thing, got up in Alice's face, and then... Now she's embracing, acknowledging what she is, a cat person. Yeah. yeah. This is when I started to love Irena because I just have a thing for, like, witches or, like, women who are put upon who, like, find out that they have some power and use it. Like, this is her sort of coming into her own, like, coming into power and being like, yeah, bitch, mm-hmm. I'm a panther woman, so you better run. Well, she avoided it for so long, but also she knows that Alice is with her husband. Yeah, they're also not too um, discreet about it. No. Uh, it. Go wait for us in the museum. Yeah. It was either in this scene or the following scene where we get just a couple seconds of animation. What? Do you remember this? No. Anybody? No. no. <laughs> okay. Remind us. <laughs> yeah, call it out. It's been two days since I've seen it. Yeah. So it's it's really only a few seconds, but you just see these animated black panthers on the screen with this kind oh. of swirling oh. image. Aren't sure. they left over from the psychiatrist scene? Do they appear there too? It's it's either this scene or the next scene with the psychiatrist where we see this animation. Uh. 
Is, and is the psychiatrist seen next? I think so. There's yes. like five of them. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, the big one, like, you know. This is the one where he does the the, the mark of a good psychiatrist and says, I can't help you. And then, then she kills him. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that part. Yeah. <laughs> but I probably could have done without the animation. Oh, really? I vaguely remember it. And the fact that none of you even all. remembered it is telling me. Tells that, you how good it was. Right? <laughs> I mean, it was okay. Sure. But anyway. A team of like 60 dudes worked really hard on that. And we <laughs> all just were like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. We didn't even <laughs> notice it. Or it was probably just one person like, I'm going to put this in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my, my big break. <laughs> So we get to see that the doctor carries a sword cane, which is useful. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> also, I've never even heard of a sword cane. Oh, really? <laughs> no. And so later, like when um, Alice and Oliver come back and like, oh, it's his sword cane. I'm like, well, how does ah, everyone know about his sword, sword cane? <laughs> yeah. It's like I've a secret weapon. This. I love it. It's some Gandalf up in here. <laughs> yeah, it's some Bond villain stuff. Yeah. <laughs> In the next scene, Oliver declares to Irena that it's over, and he wished that she would have been willing to uh, reconcile a month earlier, but it's too late now. He really wishes she would have put out. It's... <laughs> Doesn't she say, I'm ready, let's do it? Mm, and then he says, no, too late? No, she doesn't say the second part. She just says... I met with the doctor and things are going well or there's still, yeah. Doesn't she admit that she's ready to sleep with him? No. She mm -hmm. says she's no longer afraid. And yeah, Oliver yeah, basically so it's like says a similar he doesn't thing. care. Yeah, he, she basically is like, I'm willing to try okay. to be aroused by you. <laughs> I'm willing to let you try to arouse me. <laughs> <laughs> she's already getting aroused by Alice twice. So. <laughs> That's true. Maybe a sign. I also love how the psychiatrist offers to kiss her. Yeah, right. Uh, might be a conflict of interest there, pal. Yeah, a He's little bit. He's just testing out theories. <laughs> yeah. Let's also, just see if you're really a panther. Let me lay my lips upon you. Yeah. He also says in that scene, the law is quite explicit. One cannot divorce an insane person. Oh, yeah. He says she's close to insanity and that he could have her institutionalized. Right. Uh, what exactly made him think that she needed a higher level of care? The fact that she wouldn't kiss him? It's crazy. Look Nothing at his else suit. has happened. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of repression and non communication going on in 1942. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if you look at like mental health, I can't imagine like yeah. straight jackets and like dark holes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know the full history of why, what was allowed, not allowed. And Same. Yeah. But this pissed me off though because now all of a sudden they're all conspiring against her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yes that's why I don't like any of them mm -hmm. <laughs> I blame the dog though. he's like the ringleader <laughs> I mean they're all terrible um, I don't know I think they all just want what they want and they're willing to maneuver however they need to in order to get everything in place right and she's just this little only person so what, what yeah. does that matter well, you yeah. do feel for her. I mean, the movie, it's she's so sad and lonely, and it's like she's struggling the whole movie. And then even now when she's realizing the truth that she's a cat person or whatever, it's 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 sad and scary, and you really feel for her. You totally mm -hmm. do. And the other two just seem like cardboard cutouts. Even what happens at the end, the line they have, it still doesn't, for me, there's no redemption in them ganging up on her, so to speak, or not believing her or just – any sort of empathy or and what well, there was from, I guess, Oliver at the beginning, you know, when he was being patient, waiting for her. But, but she, there was not much redemption for her. There's no understanding, though, because they never really know each other in the beginning, like ever, really, not even just in the beginning. Oliver does not understand Arena whatsoever. There's no real friendship there. And of course, then there's no real relationship there no, because they don't know each so other. It's so surface and... Right. The psychiatrist has met her like three times total. Alice only knows her as like competition for Oliver. None of these people like, care, or are there for Arena in any way. No, She's alone the entire time. It's terrible. It's terrible. I, yeah, I just think Alice and Oliver should get, they should leave the zoo after seeing her and then go get hit by a bus. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was kind of hoping that. That guy's might, bus. Yeah. What is it? The Luton bus? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Right when Oliver says he wants to end things, at the end of that scene, we see Irena clawing the couch. And it's such a oh, great yeah. scene. She rakes her nails across the couch and cuts it to ribbons. I thought that was awesome. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch it the first time. The second time, I was like, wait, what? How? Mm-hmm. She doesn't have claws. Mm-hmm. It was so subtle, too. Like, But there was this beautiful shot of the claws. Yeah. She just went, Walked away and you could see the lines on the couch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Walked away to transform painfully into a panther. <laughs> <laughs> the panther screams like a woman. <laughs> I also like that she keeps calling the office to see if Alice is there. Sneaky, yep. sneaky. Yes. So we do see Alice and Oliver back at work. Suddenly they realize that the... The door that they thought they left open is now closed and we hear the phone ring and there's no one there. And now we get the sense that Irena is here in the room with them. Mm -hmm. And indeed she is in panther form. In kitty cat form. Teeny tiny panther. (laughs) (laughs) So small. I think it's interesting that this is the point where um, Oliver sort of invokes Christianity. He says, in the name of God, leave us in peace. And the measuring thing that he holds up is like a little cross. Considering that like the Serbian backstory involves Christianity, I just thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Because it's really not been mentioned at all in the entire movie other Mm -hmm. than those two instances. Yeah, it was a great use of the shadow here. And there's like a hazy quality to the film. Oh, also Alice says she needs a drink after that. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, you just found out your love interest wife is a panther that wants to kill you. (laughs) You can have a couple. Is a panther at will. (laughs) (laughs) That's a big revelation. (laughs) But also if you think about it, it's not just being sexually aroused, it's just being consumed with like passion or any hatred. Anger too. Anger, all of that, like that intense passion, something that takes over and you can't stop. You know, yeah. here it's murderous revenge. I think there's also a lot of discussion about, like, um, because the first two times that she transforms is with Alice. Is she mad at Alice or does she like Alice? I think there's a lot of, like, um, like uh, queer subtext. Well, also when the woman at the restaurant says, Moya Sestra, there's a question of whether, you know, there's some kind of other attraction there yeah. as well. So the doctor, now we're really starting to question his morals and his integrity. He has snuck into the apartment Mm -hmm. and he is waiting for Irena to come back. Old move. Yeah. (laughs) He's fired. Here he tries his alternative therapy. (laughs) (laughs) New technique I just came up with. (laughs) I will kiss you. And that does not go well. No. I really like um, when they pull away from each other, her face is, like, so calm. Like, she is unbothered by this. Well, that does not go well for the doctor. No. Love seeing a guy mauled right next to a dead panther mural. Yeah. Amazing. (laughs) I also love that she runs away afterward and just hides behind a plant, and somehow nobody sees her. That's (laughs) enough. (laughs) <laughs> so the doctor is killed, yeah. but Irena is wounded. And where does she go? She goes to the zoo and she lets the panther out. Yeah. I love in the hotel when Alice and Oliver show up, some lady who works there is like, don't worry, Mr. Reed. Sue Ellen and I called the police just as soon as we heard the racket. Um, a nosy. I'm going to be fucking worried because there's a dead guy right there. Like, it doesn't help that you called the police. <laughs> right. right. <clears throat> yeah, it's too late. I, this I guy was got th- mauled. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, oh, is he just wounded? You know? <laughs> and then they're scolding each other about, you know, never touch the bodies. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is good advice, <laughs> yeah, but right. you could check for a pulse. Right. <laughs> they didn't know what to do with those people. <laughs> is this when she gets the metal yes. rod thing through? Through her, that was her injury. Because I didn't notice that she even had that until the scene at the zoo. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of unclear about that. So when Alice and Oliver walk in and see the doc dead, they even comment on the fact that his cane, his cane sword, has oh. been broken in two. Right. Hmm. And we know where the other half is. 
Yeah, it's, it's inside of her. Stuck through it. Which is great because it, it goes back to the earlier scenes of her illustration, the statue, the cats being impaled. And there she is. She's At this point, she's a human with this thing that has impaled a cat. So, yeah, I really, really liked that a lot. I mean, I didn't like that she was wounded, um, but I, I liked how it was all coming together. Yeah. yeah. And so she dies in front of the panther cage with the sword stuck in her. I love how she lets it out. Like, she's got that key. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, But she changes into her bestial form Mm -hmm. of the Black Panther. And the last line of the movie, you all remember it? Oliver says, she never lied to us. Yeah, yeah. Spot on. (laughs) Durr. Oliver. (laughs) And that was Cat People. Yeah. Does anyone have any other... Comments along the way that I that we missed. <laughs> I, I just think it's again. I laughed because the panther leaps out of the cage and the police kill it immediately. Yes. They just run its ass over like oh yeah five right. steps away from yep. the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> the no rules zoo. <laughs> you can drive through it. You can visit it any hour of the night. The keys are in all the cages. Help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it also freaked me out because the spot where she dies at the end is exactly where the drawing drops right at the beginning it's like this weird full circle oh. yeah. inevitability like predestination almost like this was bound to happen from the beginning and she was just sort of finding her way through it it was a good a good scene at the end good death scene i had to figure out which panther was what panther like was she the dead panther is that the dead panther no i liked it it was a very it was a good ending and i liked that th- those two jerks were just standing there saying she never lied to us i thought that was a fitting ending mm-hmm. yeah sad big tragedy mm-hmm. it is it's a tragedy the movie is a tragedy it is sad it is a tragedy i yeah i think it's especially sad that like she fears this thing her entire life and then she meets this guy who's like oh don't worry about it it's fine and then after a lot of conflict she tries to like live a normal happy life and there's just that's Mm -hmm. not possible she's cursed like there's no way out for her yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i think well we've had a lot of sad tragic horror movies on the podcast (laughs) yeah well maybe we should look for a happy horror movie (laughs) (laughs) um the only other note i had was um just the fact that um, Oliver and Alice and uh, Dr. Judd or whatever mm-hmm. his name is, they all kind of banded against her, reminded me of um, Rosemary's Baby. It's mm. kind of like a predecessor predecessor where, um, you know, everyone in your life is actually plotting against you and mm. you have no one to turn to. We skipped our hot takes that were usually coming at the beginning of an episode. Oh, so uh, what did you all think? Loved it. Great. I didn't like it at first. The first time around, I thought it was kind of like by the numbers. And I already knew the basic plot. And it didn't it didn't super deviate from that. But then the second time around, I was more invested in sort of like the emotions of it and feeling how lonely she was and feeling how inevitable everything was. And there's no one to turn to and no one's really on her side. And there was just something that kind of resonated more for me the second time around. So I really Mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Sitting here and talking about it makes me feel like I should watch it again because I didn't come away from it feeling particular, anything particularly strong about it. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty flat movie for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of that might just be the, Headspace I was in when I sat down to watch it. I always try to consider that when I'm sitting down to watch something. But sitting here and talking about it and hearing all of your thoughts pointed me to things that I missed and gave me a different perspective on it that makes me want to watch it again. And I absolutely want to watch the 82 mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Um, I'm literally going to go home and do that. Now that, I, we're done here. now that I know <laughs> as much as I know about it, I've, I have been listening to that David Bowie song for years, not realizing it was for a movie specifically. Um, and I realized that Paul Schrader was involved with it. So now I'm very intrigued. And John Larroquette. Yes. 
And who else? There were anyway. I while we were doing this, I looked at the IMDb and I John saw Hurt, some. I think too. Yeah, <laughs> and then the uh, one of the guys from Sounds of the Lambs is in it. He plays like Bernie's house. Like Frankie Faison. Yes. In it. Yeah. Anyway, there's there. I saw all these faces that and Malcolm McDowell. I have to see this movie. Uh, that's and more. That's more actors that are in this movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, and it's set in New Orleans. Oh, neat. Mm, neat. Yeah. I had not. I've probably seen this movie listed somewhere, but I did not really remember it. And I d- didn't really hear of it, didn't know anything about it. And I wasn't particularly looking forward to watching it. Um, I have to be in a particular mood of movie viewing to watch a movie from the 1940s. I think it takes a little bit, not extra thought, but just extra something. And I wasn't really enjoying the movie as I was watching it. I was trying to notice the good things about it. Although apparently I ignored the sound, um, but I was noticing like the cinematography and some of the shots. I love the shadows. I was trying to put myself back into watching like some old timey movies and some like you know Hitchcock just to get in that you know vibe. And it just I'm kind of like with Matt. It was just kind of middle of the road. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. I'm glad I watched it. That I was telling Allison about this. We were talking about this the other day of just like watching things that we normally wouldn't have you know mm-hmm. watched. So it's kind of it's fun to watch something new and then to discuss it. Um, But when I did watch it, I was like, okay, what did I miss? What did I miss with this movie? And so I was reading a little bit about like how it was made and like the budget and some of the actors. And it was neat to see what the movie was doing at the time when it came out in 1942, which was pretty cool. But the fact that, so I guess they were given the title of the movie. It's like, hey, we need a movie called Cat People. Go make Cat People. Mm -hmm. So after researching various horror films and cat-related literature, Bodine and Luton developed the script with Luton doing extensive uncredited work on the story. So I just thought it was interesting to think about like how movies were made in 1942. Yeah, so I, I tried to think more like cinema in the cinematic history of things. As far as, like we really haven't talked much about how is this a horror movie? Um, so I guess we can get to that when we talk about our, our scarometer rankings. Um, but I don't have this on the list of like classic horror canon movies from the 40s. Maybe I d- d- just didn't do that for me. Um, but yeah, it was fine. I, I'm not going to go tell people to watch the movie, <laughs> but I do, but I will watch the 1982 movie. I do. I am intrigued enough by that. So, well, it, it's also interesting. And I didn't say this at the beginning that Val Luton was kind of, even though he was the producer, he had his own kind of stable of people that he liked to work with. Mm-hmm. And some people consider him an auteur as the way we consider directors to be mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of interesting thinking back on, as you said, how movies were made in the 40s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he specifically wanted Simone Simone because she had a cute cat face. Yeah. He saw her in some other movie. Oh, She's man. like, just a little cute. Yeah. And I, when I was watching, I was staring at her and looking at her. I was like, well, she looks very young. She's very pretty. And I was trying to see what cat-like features she had. One thing I did note, um, so I think... Did I watch this on Amazon Prime? I don't remember. But like the categories were suspense, horror, downbeat, fantastic. <laughs> and I was like, okay, where'd they get those from? Yeah. <laughs> but I loved at the end with the credits, um, you've got Simone Simon, Dynamite, the Panther. And oh. then the name of the actor who plays Oliver. So the Panther got second billing in the credits. <laughs> Good. I didn't at the see end. That. The that's end awesome. credits. <laughs> the end credits. It's Dynamite the Panther. I think that's fitting because so. his performance was better than yeah. Oliver's. <laughs> it's true. I think it was genuine. Yeah. yeah. That Panther was in some other movie too. Really? Good I didn't Panther wanna, actor. I didn't want to read much about the animals. I'm just afraid that they were all like beaten and terrified. Don't worry. They let them all out. Oh. <laughs> Only to get smushed <laughs> by a cop. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess it was also in the Leopard Man afterward. Hmm. That same leopard? Yep. Dynamite? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that, wait. So, Christopher, um, there is another quote at the end, too, of the movie. Oh, yeah. But black sin hath betrayed oh. to endless night my world, both parts, and both parts must die. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Suspense, horror, downbeat, defense. Yes. <laughs> was this your first watch? No, I had seen it a long, long time ago. Ah. Oh yeah. What is your What is your relationship with this movie? So I'm sure the first movie I saw was the '82 Cat People, and bizarre as it might be to think about, I think I saw it in the theater. 
in hmm. Mount Clemens, wow. <laughs> which I would have been quite young mm-hmm. to see that movie. And it's it's got a lot in it. So at some point, I'm sure I went back and watched the 1942 version, and that was many, many years ago. Uh, so that's my only relationship with the movie. Ah. Yeah. Mm. So I've just seen it like three times. I So the 82 version, I heard Nastasia Kinski was really not happy with it, but mm. she must have been friends with Jodie Foster. I read somewhere online that Jodie Foster loved it, and Nastasia Kinski really wanted to distance herself from it. Mm. Huh. So, interesting. Yeah. Okay, we ready for some Scarometer ratings? Yes. Bring it on. And um, the overall movie rating. Yes. <laughs> and quixotically, one is on a five star scale and the one scare-meter. is the scare-meter. scares out of five. Quality Score on 10. ten. I love us. <laughs> yeah, Allison's got this. We got a spreadsheet where we That's record right. this information. <laughs> um, I'll go because I did not really like this so much. Um, I was oh, not. Really? I know we had a couple of scenes that were darker and scarier. Or intended to be scarier. I did not find this movie scary whatsoever. And at least five times I was like, is this a horror movie? Is this a horror movie? Is this a horror movie? <laughs> um, I wanted to give Scarometer ranking a zero. I don't know if we can do a zero out of five if I, I need to. I firmly believe we can do zero. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a zero out of five. I was did not find things menacing or sc- I knew there was like, it was foreboding and dark. And yep, that's all I'm going to say on that. So zero out of five for the Scarometer. Yeah. Remember, Amanda, this is an Amazon you can give zero stars. <laughs> there is very little on a on a movie rating. I will never give it a zero. I don't think I've ever given. There's a couple of things that I yeah. I guess there's maybe two things I've ever done that for. But for like a scare ranking, like there's no like. If I'm gonna recommend a horror movie. I'm like, hey, it's not scary. Um, my final ranking for the movie, I'm gonna go six out of ten. Kind of like middle of the roadish. I'm glad I watched it. It's not high on my list of things to recommend people. I do want to watch the 1982 one. And I was happy to discuss all this with you guys. That's also what you gave the Beyond. Six out of ten. The Beyond? Mm. Mm. That was a funny one, too. <laughs> <laughs> We've been picking winners lately. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the point. That's not the point to pick ten out of tens, because horror movies, the fun of it is watching some just trash. and Something some, different. Some fun things right. like that you can pick apart and just like have fun with. Right. I'll go next. I am going to give it a one out of five. For Scarometer? For Scarometer, yeah. I didn't find the movie scary, but um, there's something about like that feeling of inevitability that does kind of get under my skin in like a conceptual way. Um, also sort of um, like that same feeling is what makes something like hereditary scary to me. It's not necessarily what I'm watching, but like the idea that no matter what you do, you can't escape what is happening. So I'll give that a one out of five and then overall rating, I'll give it an eight out of 10. Um, I really liked the movie and there's something about the way that arena is not listened to by mm-hmm. anyone in society that really sort of struck me and that I it, it resonated with me in a certain way. So the whole time I really felt for her and I was invested in her character. And so I really um, ended up enjoying the movie on the second watch. <laughs> so eight out of 10 for me. I will a definite zero out of five for, for uh, scare meter. Um, I th- nothing scary about this, Amanda. My feelings kind of reflect yours almost exactly. I started to wonder. I I tried to not Google anything while I was watching it, but I did think about looking up: Is this considered a horror movie? Mm-hmm. Keeping in mind that the year, every time yeah. I would start to feel something like that or feel bored or feel frustrated at the movie, I would try to remember 1942. Mm-hmm. This was probably some wild shit still Mm -hmm. nothing about it really scared me um yeah and then i had an idea for my number when i when i finished watching the movie and i feel like talking about it has maybe lifted it a full number nice to five okay nice Um, i I almost didn't love (laughs) the movie it's like i i I even (sighs) I even feel weird giving it a five because that is a failing grade. It's not a failing movie, 
to me, and I'm sure that there's somebody who has all the fucking Criterion Collection discs who is hearing <laughs> this thinking I'm an asshole or that I'm stupid, and well, both might be true, but this movie just didn't do a ton for me. Five out of ten, that's half. You halfway yeah. liked it. <laughs> that's yep. middle of the road, Matt. If you would have given it a three, that would have oh, been for a sure. different statement, but middle <laughs> but of the road. Cruel. Middle of the road. <laughs> three is cruel, and I, I can... I, I'm trying to think of what I would give a three. Anyway, I, this this movie this movie was just fine. It do, but talking about it made me appreciate it more. I wonder if watching it again would make me like it a little bit more and maybe give it a six. Um, I'm certainly very interested in the '80s one now, um, and I might even watch that this weekend. But. Yeah. Ooh, I ranked this higher than I did for The Orphanage. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. You did not like that movie. <laughs> Man. I'm, I'm a harsh so... critic. <laughs> I give so many things three out of five, though, so I'm, like, surprised. That's... Anyways. Yeah. Three out of five, just, like, average, you know? Yeah. I rank, like, mm-hmm. almost everything. Yeah, like, this is six out of ten. It's fine. Because I realize it. Yeah. Well, I give... for a 10 out of 10, right? <laughs> five out of five, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Scared mark. even thinking about it. <laughs> I give this a one out of five on the scarometer. You know, it's, it, we're all adults. Nothing really scares us so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Only technically. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. But I thought there were some great scenes, and I saw a lot of reviews of this movie saying, the parts that are left out are the parts that make this so scary. Mm-hmm. You know, the swimming pool scene and that walk through the dark passageway, I think, are fantastic. They're so well filmed, so interesting and effective. Yeah. So well, I, and too, when you say that too, Christopher, like in 1942, I would have given this a completely different ranking. But being in 2023 and watching the hundreds of horror movies that we've all watched, there we are looking at things through a different lens for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So I give this a strong seven out of 10, possibly an eight. I okay. just think it's great. Uh, I, I love the characters. You know, I love how we feel about the tragedy of the whole story, her doomed life from the beginning, you know, it, but what's better than that is that we don't even really know how it's going to end, you know, but Things just start collapsing around her. She is forced into this cursed role, and she has no other choice, really, by the actions of everyone around her and her circumstances. She ends up playing this part that she was always destined to play. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's great. And despite all that, we don't even necessarily see it coming Mm -hmm. exactly in the way that it plays out. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah, I I really like the movie. And if you look at the other horror movies that came out in 42, nothing, you know, really stands the test of time or uh, holds up to this movie. Yeah. Just to sort of piggyback off of that, I was thinking about it and, this is like right in the middle of the Hayes Code. So what you could even show was like very, very, very limited by um, the, what is it, MPAA at the time. But um, sort of, uh, I'm going to advocate for this movie as a horror movie because one, I think those two scenes, the pool scene and the stalking scene are very suspenseful. And I would also argue that um, a lot of this movie is sort of early body horror, but you can't really show that much of it Mm -hmm. in this time period. But the idea of transforming into something else, um, it's sort of like the predecessor to something like a werewolf movie that you would see later. Or, um, you know, it reminded me of a couple other more recent movies that we've mentioned before. Like, it reminded me of Rosemary's Baby. It reminded me of It Follows. So... Like, is it tame by our standards? Absolutely. But I would say that it's a horror movie. Mm-hmm. It's just a very early horror movie. Yeah. I was, I'm looking, I pulled up a list of some other 1940s horror movies. Um, I Walked with a Zombie. That's by the same director. Yeah. Um, the Wolfman, Dead of Night. I think Wolfman the was victim. the next year, 43. 43. Yeah. So yeah. there's a few other ones. Um, what was nine? The Wolfman was 1941. 
But also um, Val Luton was really trying to work against that like universal horror movie mm-hmm. monster yeah, thing yeah. that had already been established and in he the got previous some, decade. He got some backlash for that. Yeah. Well, he kind of went maybe too far in the wrong in the other direction. Um, having watched most of those movies last October for Halloween, I think a lot of it is sort of in line with what would have been considered horror at the mm-hmm. time. Like yeah. if you watch Frankenstein from 31, it's not really that scary, but um, mm-hmm. to audiences at the time that might have been really freaky and something that they hadn't seen before. Yeah. Obviously well, haven't seen before. Well, and there are kids watching like The Exorcist now and they're like, that's not scary. But like yeah. at the time it came out, you whoa. mean me? <laughs> what? That's what, I'm sa- that's what I'm saying. As like a, a modern film viewer, you're like, what? But when you're watching that, you know, like or like Alien, or just hearing stories of people who are Alien holds up. Yeah. That shit was freaky. That was <laughs> so weird. That's a good one. Like the Mummy's yeah. Hand, 1940, Doctor Cyclops, the Devil Bat, the Monster and the Girl. <laughs> I own the Devil Bat. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> 1940. Anyways, it's. A, I mean, we're here to, to delve into what scares us, and it's fun to pick apart yeah. films from different genres of the of you know. And different eras. Different eras. That's what I meant. Different right. eras. Yeah. But also, like, who is to say what horror is or isn't? Similar to what scared me about the Beyond is more the idea of it, and the ideas in this movie. Sure, they're scary, even if nothing on the mm-hmm. screen is particularly scary to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, well, because the scary part, and sometimes the most effective horror movies are when the scary things you never see, they're happening off screen. Yep. Unknown always is the That's what makes scary. Jaws so scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. And we've talked about that with some of the other films, even on here that we've talked about. Fear of the unknown, the unseen. It's also cheaper if all the, the, guts, <laughs> the guts are happening over there. <laughs> That's why that panther's in shadow. That's right. <laughs> Dynamite. Well, if you like what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. Mm